Among these are Hymenaeus, Hymenaeus and Alexander, who I have handed over to Satan so that they will be taught not to blaspheme. Mm. Wait a minute. I thought we're not supposed to be judgmental. You will know them by their fruits. This is not judgmental. Mm -mm. Okay? What, what's, he, what's he doing here? Paul names names. And it's not the only place that he does that, right? No. That's a picture of the shepherd I was just gonna protecting say the flock. Right. That's what it is. Protecting and caring for the flock. Those who have gone astray. Protecting them from those who have gone astray. We need to have that. Go read 1 Corinthians 5, where it talks about, you know, where it says we're not to judge the world, but we are to judge those inside the church. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, like he says again in 2 Timothy, their talk will spread like gangrene, and among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, men who have gone astray from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already taken place and they upset the faith of some. 2 Timothy 2, 17 and 18. They're teaching falsehood. That's what they're doing. And apparently, they will not repent of teaching that falsehood. So what has Paul done? He's handed them over to Satan. Well, that's pretty rough, isn't it? But it's not for their destruction. Amen. It's for their salvation. Amen. In 2 Samuel 14, 14, God spoke through the prophet and said, God does not take away life, but plans ways so that the banished one will not be cast out from him. God has a plan, and his plan is for life. In Ezekiel 18, 23, he says, Do I have any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, rather that he should turn away, turn from his ways and live? Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 5, and he said, I have decided to deliver such a one. Now, this is not talking about Hymenaeus, somebody else. Mm -hmm. He said, I've decided to deliver such a one to Satan, for the destruction of his flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. What is this called? Love. It's called discipline. And discipline is love. That's right. And love requires discipline. That's why we're called disciples, because God loves us. That's right. You see, it says in Hebrews 12 that all discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterward it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Hebrews 12, 11. It's called discipline. It is not punishment. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me just back up one verse, all right? In Hebrews 12, 10, it says, for they discipline, talking about our earthly fathers, they discipline us for a short time as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good so that we may share his holiness okay god has a purpose he is a he is a consuming fire and he is burning away the dross the world today prohibits discipline i mean yes. discipline your child you know have the uh, hrs yeah somebody right there and by the way the hrs like the irs they have the ability to yeah. take action and do things without due process. Right. Without court being involved. Without yeah. due process. They don't have to take you to court. They can come. The they IRS can, innocent. They can come and take away your money, and then you've got to prove you didn't do anything mm -hmm. wrong. The same way the, the HRS, the, can, the HRS can come and take away your children, and then you've got to prove you didn't do anything wrong. Right. Okay? Uh, take that to your constitution and eat it. So, fathers, listen now. Fathers, godly fathers, discipline their children. Governments punish evildoers. That's God's plan. Thank you.